okay, fellas. What is the V40? I hear people say, what the fuck is he doing? Excuse me. Okay, fellas, what is the V40? I heard people say, for God's sake, what is he doing? Why is he building an aeroplane? A wannabe forgot the aid of his own design just to be a look-alike. But this is not the case. The Fokker V40 is a very interesting aeroplane. Many don't actually know that it existed. Back in the day, Fokker was a builder of fighter aircraft like the D8, which became world famous and world known. Not only because they were sturdy and tough, but also they were aerodynamically very advanced. So he made lots of money and grew a big company building those fighter planes for the German Army Air Service. But then the war was lost and over, and the customer broke away. The, to him, it was a way of not knowing what the future holds and which path to go in the future. Before the war, all he wanted was to fly. He was one of those guys, one of those early pioneers, who gathered a bunch of bamboo and a few pieces of wood stick and tacked airplanes together and came up with his spider in order to take him aloft. The spider was a huge aeroplane, at that time powered by a powerful engine just to take one man or two men in the case of the spider aloft and enjoy the fun of flying. Now the war was over, Fokker was about to find new ways to keep his company going. And one of the ways he tried was to create a light sports craft based on the general layout of what we know today as the Fokker D8. This was not the V40. This was the V-39. The intention was to create a cheap to be manufactured aircraft that can be powered by a relatively reasonable engine and handed out to the average wannabe pilot at the time to bring the sports, aviation sports, more into the public by means of an aeroplane that could be produced and bought and sold relatively cheaply. So that people can afford it. But this, the V39, was still too big, still too complicated, and still too expensive to maintain. So he came up with a design in 1919 that was even smaller. And this was the V40. He only built one prototype of this and was again way ahead of his time. During the war years, Fokker created a whole bunch of aircraft, 60 in total. Not many people know about this. I've put them all together in little line drawings like those in 1 to 70 second scale in a PDF file which can be downloaded from our Patreon site, by the way. 60 aeroplanes! Let me give you a glimpse. The first one he built in 1910, then his first spiders. Then when the war broke out, or shortly before that, the M5, the first of the long series of fighter airplanes, which he developed in a trial and error way, all the way along over the E3, the D4, whatever, to the D5, until he started a new developing line, which began over here, wait a second, with the V1. The V4, the first prototype of the triplane. The V5, the prototype of the production triplanes later on. More airplanes. They're all shown in those line drawings all along my wall in my little museum. And here we have both the V39 and the V40. existed. It existed in only one prototype. And this prototype flew very well 
and it was often taken for recreational flights. And we can see photographs of it standing along the Fokker F2, which is one of his first airliners on a Dutch airfield, next to the B40. Both are standing there. So this is proof the airplane was out in the airfield and was flown, but it was not manufactured in mass production. It did not enter the market simply because Fokker decided to continue make airliners and other fighter aircraft for militaries of other nations, rather than Germany, of course. So, the V-40 was way ahead of its time. Aerodynamic-wise, design-wise, the accumulation of four years of experience in fighter aircraft production was put together to create this aircraft. This tiny little grasshopper. You could compare it with a Pete and Paul air camper, for instance. Before the war, Fokker tried to create an aircraft that put him into the air because he wanted to fly. After the war, he went back to his roots with a V-39 and a V-40 trying to create airplanes for the small guy. The Pete and Paul Air Camper, for instance, is a very nice little aircraft. Um, it's designed in 1928 by Mr. Bernard Pete and Paul, I think. Bernard was his name. If I'm wrong, don't, uh, don't hit me. <laughs> uh, I think Bernard Pete and Paul. He designed it in 1928 and he built it uh, early in the 30s. And I think the maiden flight took place 1933. Today it's a very popular aircraft among home builders since it is relatively tiny, despite being still bigger than the V40. Um, the V40's wingspan, by the way, is just 6 meters. And uh, the Pete and Pole is also designed to be as simple to be manufactured as a home build by the average guy. Uh, is still way more complicated in construction than the V40 is. And the V40 was 10 years earlier. 1918-1919. The Pitbull Air Camper, 1928. This is just amazing. Only one prototype existed. No other machine was ever built. Enough material is available in our archive to recreate this airplane. And this is what we do here. So the V40 is not my own brainchild, a wannabe Fokker, it is a Fokker. And it is the first time in 104 years that this airplane is being put together. I'm building two of them. One will remain here in the museum and the other one is going to be certified in the aerobatics class, not as a microlite. Although the aircraft would qualify as a microlite. A microlite because of its takeoff weight, which is about 300 kilograms. This is very lightweight, but if you would go the way to certify it as a microlite, it would be just allowed to fly. Since it is made on the experience of fighter aircraft production, it is a very sturdy airframe and it can cope aerobatic maneuvers. And this is why we certify it in the aerobatic class. Not because it will be a great performer, but just because we want to be able to expose the airframe to anything you could do in classic dynamic aerobatics. We've come already a long way in recreating the two airplanes we're building. You can follow the process here. Best is, I take you upstairs and show you the aircraft in its current stage. Here they are. These are the two airplanes in their current stage. You may follow the process either on Facebook or with behind the scene information like this little video clip here on Patreon if you become a member and support the museum. Uh, or via the free workshop watch episodes we publish on YouTube. You see, it's a very tiny aircraft. It's very nice and it's the first time in 104 years that these airplanes can be touched again. And soon you will see this one flying. This is the airplane that will be certified in the aerobatics class. In the earlier sequences you saw me working on the wing for this aeroplane. The wing for this aeroplane already is done and is pulled up to show the size. 
It's a very tiny aircraft, fits in almost every garage. And this brings me to another point. If you're interested in building an airplane, what the goal of our museum is, is to support the wish of especially younger people, but not only, uh, to create and build their own aircraft. It is a very educative thing. We don't want to earn money, we are not after money, we need your support, that's why we have set up the Patreon page here. Uh, and every dime you spend on anything we offer will support the museum and keep us going. But the main goal is to push the building of aircraft, the home building of aircraft, a bit further uh, ahead. And, and we want to do this by providing the drawings we generate for this aircraft. They can be on request, got for free, from me. Just send me an email and ask me. And I will forward everything we've done so far in drawings and what we will be doing in the course of finishing the aircraft. Drawing-wise, you can have them. You can build your own aircraft from it. You can use our workshop watch as a guide on how to build it. You can learn. You can have fun. You can enjoy early aviation history. Just go for it. Ask. We will also set up the whole set of drawings as downloadable files here on Patreon. They won't be expensive here. You don't need to buy them, but if you do, you support the museum. So, that's it. The Fokker V40, for those who are interested in, is not a fantasy thing. I want to be the 8 that I designed. It is an historic aircraft. It is Fokker technology. It is absolutely ingenious and simple to build and will certainly fly like a bat out of hell.